Hello! Welcome to a special Christmas episode of Comic Tropes. I am your host, Chris, and this time last year, I reviewed an episode of the Rambo cartoon that was set during Christmas time. It was bonkers, and I had a great time. I think it's one of the funnier things that I've made. I just had a really good time. I wanted to do something similar this year. So I searched, and I searched, and I think I found something. It was late December 1995, and Fox Kids decided that for the 62nd episode of X-Men, they would make it a Christmas episode. It is pretty bizarre. Uh, there's no supervillains to fight, there's not really a, any conflict in this whole cartoon, and characters don't really behave in believable ways. But you know what? Overall, it's kind of sweet, so I understand what they were going for. Without any more preamble, let's dive right into it, folks. Our episode begins in the X-Mansion with several X-Men decorating an absolutely enormous tree that I can't figure out how they got inside. Jubilee, Rogue, and Cyclops are singing Christmas carols, but Jubilee thinks Cyclops is singing terribly. I don't know why she'd care. I've never judged a friend or family member at a party for singing badly. But Jubilee is young, dumb, and full of firecrackers. Ah, the 90s, when Avi Arad was producing pretty much every Marvel property in Hollywood. You kids today don't know how good you have it with Kevin Feige at the head of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Avi Arad gave us some really terrible stuff like the Generation X TV movie and the Nick Fury TV movie. Just, just bizarre, terrible stuff. Jubilee asks Wolverine to take Cyclops' place singing, which is absolutely ridiculous since everything out of Wolverine's mouth is an angry growl. But hey, she's trying to get him in the Christmas spirit. Wolverine just about bites her head off, saying he doesn't want to partake in any of that nonsense, which is actually taken from the comics, where he says he hates Christmas. That's canon. Wolverine hates Christmas. Now, Wolverine never has any particular reason to be upset or mad about Christmas. I think he's just acting immature, because if he really hates Christmas, I don't know, hop on your motorcycle and drive out and fight some ninjas for the holidays. Instead, he's sitting right there in the living room with the X-Men, but acting grumpy and, mm, he doesn't want to participate. Me. Rogue tells Jubilee not to worry about grouchy old Wolverine and flies her up to place the star atop the tree. Delightful. Meanwhile, in a pointless side plot, seemingly designed only to keep the rest of the voice actors busy, Jean Grey and Gambit are cooking Christmas dinner and arguing. Gambit says the food, and it's never really clear what kind of food it is, needs more spice. Because he's Cajun! How Cajun? Well, on top of his over-the-top ridiculous accent, he's wearing a sassy little scarf. Wait a minute, that, that actually may not be Cajun, that might just be weird. Yeah, Gambit is, Gambit is just weird. When Gambit says the food needs more spice, Jean flips out. She begins talking in a regal voice and yelling at Gambit about invading her kitchen. She's seriously only the tiniest sliver toned down from going Dark Phoenix, all over adding some spice. She declares that it's her kitchen. It's very empowering. When Gambit still wants to add some actual flavor instead of letting Jean crank out some bland, waspy mayonnaise of a dinner, Jean uses her telekinetic powers to prevent Gambit from lifting the pepper. Then Jean lets go and Gambit falls backwards, knocking the soupy food all over his head. So I assume Gambit is now dealing with some bad third-degree burns. Congratulations, Jean! You've got your bland dinner ready and you put a teammate in the hospital. It's a Christmas miracle! While all of that's going on, Beast is doing his normal routine of working in a lab upside down. He put on a lab smock, but gravity made it fall down in his face. Beast is the smart one of the team, by the way. Elsewhere in the mansion, Professor X and Storm spy on everyone on monitors and talk about how happy they all seem. I gotta say, the team probably wouldn't seem so happy if they knew that you were spying on them. That's creepy. Also creepy? Storm's outfit. Suddenly, there's the sound of an explosion, and warning bells begin going off. Rogue punches down a door in the mansion to investigate. Who gets to fix that? Because it was completely unnecessary. You see, the explosion was Beast's lab equipment. And while it looks like he's a bloody mess, it's actually what he was mixing that exploded. And what was he mixing? Cranberry sauce. I don't know what Beast was adding to his cranberry sauce, but whatever it was, 
If it's that volatile that it can actually explode, I think all of the X-Men dodged a bullet. Uh, that cannot be safe for your stomach, even if you've got mutant superpowers. Wolverine acts somewhat sensibly, saying they're all acting like idiots, and that he's going to go out by himself. But then Jubilee begs him to do some Christmas Eve shopping with him. Christmas Eve shopping. Yeah, thanks Jubilee. I bet the team is going to love their Christmas Day presents of, I can only assume, gas station beef jerky and losing lotto tickets. We cut to the mall, and apparently Wolverine went shopping, even though he says he hates it. He's just a complaining machine. Jubilee is having a great time, and Storm is... there. Wolverine says he can't wait to get out of there, so they do. And then Jubilee skates with Wolverine at Rockefeller Plaza, even though Wolverine says he hates it. Wolverine is so over-the-top dickish in this episode. It's like they've got Grouchy Smurf on the team. Every third word out of this guy's mouth is hate. Because the X-Men are incapable of having a normal day, an ambulance then crashes off the road and is about to flatten the ice skaters. Storm calls on the wind in her uniquely pretentious way where she announces it so loud that there are people in New Jersey that hear about it, and she blows the ambulance out of the way. Two weirdos jump out of the ambulance while sirens approach. These are Morlocks, mutants who look weird so they can't fit into normal society. So they live in the sewer instead of, say, a small town? Ape has the power to make his hands larger, so he rips the door off the ambulance. Keep in mind, they were driving, so it probably was not locked. Anna Lee grabs a bunch of medical supplies, helpfully labeled as such with big red crosses, and Jubilee asks what's wrong. She wants to help because she's a good person. Anna Lee explains that one of the Morlock kids, Leech, is sick. They went to the hospital, but the people there were super racist and literally refused him service. Which is actually pretty weird, because doctors deal with people with skin deformities and strange growths every single day in real life. Storm says she believes the Morlocks and they'll go help, which is not only the right thing to do, but Storm is actually supposed to be the leader of the Morlocks. She just doesn't, you know, live with them and bother to check in on what they need. It'd be like if you said you were the king of the homeless, but never bothered to volunteer at a soup kitchen. Ape and Annalee lead the three X-Men into the sewers. They literally have to walk through piss and shit. No wonder Leech is sick. It's actually quite impressive that all of the Morlocks aren't suffering from dysentery. Oh, and don't worry, Jubilee is still carrying her packages around. Callisto, the leader in all but name, grouchily shows the X-Men to Leech. He's sick or injured in a way that's not really ever clear. He's just laying down in pain. The writers can't bother to define what's wrong with him. Jubilee takes a look at their Christmas tree. It's worse than Charlie Brown's. You'd think that they could do better than a single shattered ornament, but I guess not. These people are living their absolute worst existence possible. Why couldn't they live in the X-Mansion with the rest of the mutants? Well, in the comics, the Morlocks are actually pretty radicalized, and they don't believe in Xavier's dream of peaceful coexistence with mutants and humanity. But in the cartoon, that's never mentioned, so they just look like angry people that like living in filth. Storm orders Wolverine to take Leech back to the mansion where Beast can help him with medical care. Wolverine takes one look at the kid and declares it's too late for that, and moving him would be fatal. Whatever you say, Dr. Wolverine. Another Morlock kid is scared at Leech being so sick, so Jubilee comforts her. This is Mariana, whose scaly skin and big eyes and blonde hair seem to be inspired by the Marvel character Marina Smallwood. Marina was a character in the Marvel comics, but she wasn't a mutant. She was an alien from another planet who ended up joining the Canadian superhero team Alpha Flight. She later married Namor the Submariner, then went crazy and tried to kill lots of people. Comics. Mariana isn't the only Morlock concerned. Also worried about Leech are Hillbilly Zombie, Anna Lee, Gumface, and 1980s Pirate. Wolverine says he had medical training in the army and grabs an enema kit. Oh, I'm sorry, apparently it's a blood transfusion kit. Storm says that she needs him to try to do a transfusion, but Wolverine angrily says it won't work. And Wolverine is probably right, because while Wolverine's superpower is a healing factor, Leech's power is to cancel out any other mutant's power, so that makes Wolverine's healing powers useless. Plus, if they're a different blood type, Wolverine's blood could literally kill Leech. 
Jubilee tries to shield the kid from all the shouting while Storm orders him to at least try and she'll contact the mansion to have Rogue fly Beast to them. It's a pretty good plan. Too bad they don't have a teleporter on the team. Ape turns into a table so that Wolverine can lay beside Leech and give him some blood. Slug butt. 80s pirate, Callisto, Gumface, and Strong Hobo watch on intently. Then Beast shows up and declares Leech is fine. So I guess Wolverine's blood worked, and quickly. I also guess Beast's fur must smell pretty bad after he got out of the sewer. Storm demands Callisto hand her the leadership stick, which looks like some umbrellas glued together. She has Callisto kneel, stand right back up, and then hands the stick back to her. The animation is literally reversed. Storm declares, Callisto is the leader. Merry Christmas, Callisto. You're in charge now. Get to work. Everyone's happy. Beast picks up Leech. Then Wolverine takes a minute to almost smile and gently stroke Leech's face. Storm declares that they should all have dinner. Then Jubilee says most of the presents she got are food, so they can share that. But when Leech and Mariana open the presents, they're playing with toys. Did Jubilee buy toys for her fellow X-Men? That's some poor gift giving. Jubilee hugs Wolverine and he kind of accepts it. It's a Christmas miracle! It's not quite as great a Christmas back at the mansion. Jean and Gambit are still fighting over food and Cyclops just sadly and quietly stands in the corner. Professor X gets a phone call from Jubilee and tells her that while he'll miss them tonight, he thinks them hanging out with the Morlocks is a really nice thing. And that's it. Kid gets sick, the X-Men heal him. The end. Anyway, it's crazy, but it's kind of sweet. I had fun doing this, so if you guys enjoy this, I will probably find another Christmas cartoon to review next year. I hope you're all having a good holiday, and get ready because there's more comic tropes on the way. So, until then, keep reading comics.